Hello everybody and welcome to my review of One Piece chapter 1033. Oda focuses on one fight and we get some huge information about a member of the Shimasuki clan, Shimasuki Kozoboro, case in point that's the title of this chapter. And also highlighting Zoro with a huge upgrade when it comes to his swords and Oda made a specific point to highlight each of those swords in this chapter. We start Speaking of swordsmen, we start off on the cover page with Tashigi and Smoker, and I think it's an interesting choice. Number one, Tashigi and Smoker uh, with pe penguins, and they're acting out as make believe heroes against villains, and the penguins have got swords. But also, the fact that Tashigi's in front of Santa, as well as Smoker being in the background, is an interesting choice because the first sword that Oda focuses on in this chapter is the Sandai Kotetsu, and if you remember, Tashigi was in the store when Zoro took the Sendai Kotetsu. We start off the chapter with Zoro versus King outside the Skull Dome, and obviously Zoro losing control at Emna without permission, so his hockey's being drained. So like I said, has three battles to overcome. This is one of them by the end of this chapter. It looks like he got a grip of the, one of the three problems he had to deal with, and that's obviously control at Emna. He did that by the end of this chapter. The King sees this, he, he goes into attack, because King stands right in front of it, and it's like he is taunting, allowing Zoro to strike him with the sword. Because Zoro pierces him, and King just detonates. He, ex he explodes, and then it cuts to the exchange between Sanji and Queen. I thought this was going to go back and forth here. The reason this is here is for Queen to hype up King, because Queen's like, "Oh, you were on the, you were, on, you were talking to the pirate hunter Zoro, weren't you?" And he's got no chance against King. And we get more insights to the, the race, the Lenarians of the King's from. So he's a surviving Lenarian who was supposed to be eradicated from the world. First off, the fact that he was, they were able to survive anything the world threw at them makes it seem like the Lenarians obviously did not get along with the world government. Case in point, the, re the last time we heard about this, they loved the top of the red line, which I'm wondering if that was Marajoa before the Celestial Dragons took it over. The main point is they they were known as gods in the distant past, so more more light as to what type of race the Lenarians were. And I'm kind of curious if the legend of Sun God Nika that we heard from Who's Who during his fight with Jinbei is actually attached to the Lenarian race. We don't really know for sure, but the fact that they were en the fact that they were enemies of the government or the world, and also the fact that Who's Who heard. He heard about it, this rumor in Marajoa in the prison, and they wanted him dead. Like, they did not want him getting out with that type of knowledge. So, yeah, the god who said that to him, we don't know who that was. Cuts past to Zoro versus King. Zoro, so he uses one sword style, Lion's Sung, and immediately Zoro's got to dig way down deep because this doesn't do anything to King. He cut through him, no effect. King responds with, again, another goofy facial expression, but he uses an Imperial Tempera to attack Zoro. And while this is going on, Emna's acting up again, so he's barely able to dodge. In fact, he actually does get hit. So as Zoro's being attacked, he starts losing his grip, grip of his sword. That's when he gets back as a Sandai Kitetsu. And this is where Oda decides to like focus in on where Zoro first obtained it, back in Logtown, and also when he talked to Hitetsu about for obviously the purpose of a black blade, but also the fact that he was the one that forged the Sunday Kotetsu. I do find it interesting how this is going on. you got King, who's like, by the way, he's like igniting his leg on some Sanji type of deal and just kicking him into the ground. That was an interesting choice, the fact that he can manipulate his flames. I think we've seen this before, but it's interesting we have we didn't see that in the clash between Sanji and King. That could, that could have been kind of cool. He starts losing grip on the Wonder with Jumanji, which obviously is a huge place in Zora's heart with, uh, see, with, with Kuina. And we also know that Shimasuki Kozaburo was the one that forged that Wonder with Jumanji. The fact that it came from Wano in the first place is interesting. We actually get that. Zora gets back the Wonder with Jumanji. He's talking about how did the sword get out of Wano all the way into the East Blue, which is something we should have been asking. We've probably asking ourselves ever since we found out the one that you might kick from one out. Then King comes down with the Imperial Twin Blades. So Zoro gets back his other three swords and then he, he's thinking about Emna as well. The fact that, and then this triggers the flashback to 
Zora meeting Shimasuki Kozobora like 13 years ago in the East Blue in Shimasuki Village. Dojo is called Shimasuki Dojo, where we see obviously we see Kuina versus Zoro, and then this explains quite a few things. First off, Kozobora is saying Tsunachi to Zoro. Now we know where, where he heard that from. The fact that Oda is highlighting this, it probably means I'm not saying for sure that Zoro is not from Wano because it could be possible, but we still don't know. But the fact that he's he's learning it from the outside and the fact. That Zoro would have to escape Wano. First off, he would have, have to leave the borders to Wano. It's not impossible because obviously, because the borough did it illegally. But we found that from Hitetsu not too long ago. We had to get that brought up again. He's described as a village geezer, but we couldn't find out. That's Shimasuki Kozoboro. Zoro makes the reference as a kid that, oh, I heard you were samurai. Everybody at the dojo says that. It, he's like, don't talk about that because you'll get me in trouble with the Marines. I'm wondering why he left Wano illegally. Also, he has an interesting eyebrow. It's gonna, I think, I'm going to point that out right now. Either way, we see Zoro training as a kid because he obviously got beat by Kuina, given the swords, which uh, he used the, those swords to... When we, when we got Zoro's flashback the first time, we did see that he used kendos, and then he actually had swords of his own. Now we know where he got those swords from. It's from Shimasuki Kozoboro. And I'm guessing it's the same swords we saw at the start of the series where we first saw him. He's given Zoro the rundown of how swords exist from blacksmiths that exist to cut people down. But the most important part of this dialogue is where we get each blade is like a person with a unique disposition whose swordsman who is one to take the swords wild nature and bends it to their will which is obviously a reference to what Zoro does in this chapter with Emna and then what we found out is Shimasuki Kozoboro also forged another sword that was left in Wano and we also find out he named it after the Lord of the Underworld which stands for Emna and Zoro kind of puts it together and realization dawns on and what we found out is that he left Wano illegally 50 years ago by the way which is way before Odin's time and it looks like what the Emna blade is, has been testing Zoro out this entire time but because Zoro it's not been strong enough, hasn't met its standards yet, he hasn't been able to wield it and turn it into a black blade until now. And he can't compliments Odin for like being able to wield it so easily. I doubt that's the case. I think Odin probably had to do as much has struggled just as much. It's just he was well trained in using M that Zoro had so it literally just got him end of one right two. So yeah, it was obviously gonna be a daunting task to harness Emna. And then while this is going on, you've got some fodder who's targeting Zoro. They're thinking about actually attacking him. And this immediately gives me the vibes we got with Katakuri and Luffy. And while the fodder are thinking about attacking him, King's like, no. And knocks him out with Conqueror's Hockey, King's Hockey. It's interesting. I'm wondering if Zoro's doing that too. Because at one point, he's, looking, he's not looking. But in the next panel, where we see after the knocked out, he clearly is. So... When we saw Luffy and Katakuri do the same thing, we saw both of them activate Conqueror's Hockey. That was without question. When it comes to Conqueror's Hockey and Zoro, though, Oda's been pretty vague and pretty secretive about that. We, it's like, don't on the lines. It's like, we heard it from Kaido after Zoro wounded Kaido. It's like, oh, you have Conqueror's Hockey too. And Zoro's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I just wanted to leave a, leave a mark on you. And it kind of got brushed aside. There have been certain points in the series where it showcase maybe he does have Conqueror's Hockey. It would not be a shock. And it looks like that's the case because and it looks like King is getting ready for this, which is also kind of cool. So it's like you've also got a King's ambition. Triggers a flashback, a panel of where he meets Luffy for the first Luffy's like, the world's greatest swordsman. I wouldn't have it any other way. That's perfect for the future King of the Pirates. So it goes hand in hand. And then if Zoro's here to fulfill his promises to his captain and his closest friend Queena. So yeah, that's a great way to end the chapter. The fact that King's ambition gets mentioned by King himself and then we also get the flashback by Shimasuki Kozoboro, a swordsman who is one who, atta who tames the swords while nature and bends it to their will. Again, that's what happens with Emna. So it looks like Emna completely transforms into a black blade. And if you look closely, the other two blades also being activated with Haki because there's no point in order to highlight in not only the Emna blade, 
but also he focuses on the Sandai Kitetsu and the Wanda Winter Manji especially. And now it makes actual perfect sense the more I think about it. Oda had Zoro hand in Shusui and trade it for Emna for this moment. So yeah, because if that was already a Black Blade to begin with. And just because it's a Black Blade, it does not mean that that Zoro's three blades are transformed into a super supreme grade upon the 12 high-ranking swords in One Piece. No. That's not what this is because because Susui, as I just mentioned, is a permanent was a permanent black blade, and that's a great grade. And the only supreme grade swords that we know of are the Yaru, which is, which is Hawkai Mihawk's sword, the Mukura Kumigiri, which is the sword that Whitebeard had. We know Ace, which is the sword that Goldie Roger had, and obviously the Shodai Katetsu. Yeah, the fact that. Yeah, those are the only four Supreme Grade swords that we know of, and it doesn't mean that Zoro has transformed these three blades into Supreme Grade, no. Because that's way too soon. That will, be ha that will happen by the end of the series, but it's a huge feat for Zoro to like transform M into a Black Blade. It looks like one, the Wild Wizard Manji and the Sandai Kadetsu got an upgrade too. So I do like the fact that it's ended the same way the beginning of the final round with Luffy versus Katakuri. With Katakuri and Luffy knocking out the Fada, after Flambe interfered, Katakuri got pissed. Here, Luffy just knocked them out so they could go at it in the final round. It looks like that's what this is because it got more insight into King's character because he easily attack Zoro then if he wanted to, but it's like, no, I see. They could have some sort of respect for one another. It does make sense. So we could get some on some Katakuri versus Luffy level plus action in the final round between Zoro and King. So yeah, this just ignites the purpose of this fight even more. Like, Zoro is going to have to throw everything and the kitchen sink in this fight. That's what this looks like, and it's awesome to see. Oda was going to have Zoro transform the Black Blades by the end of the fight. Technically, you could say it's his midway fight if you want to. I don't suspect that Oda's going to focus another chapter on this fight just because there's other aspects for Oda to focus on. So this is just another fight that has to like have more in order to wrap up by the towards the end of either 1 or at 3 or have it conclude during 1 or at 4 if there is a 1 or at 4 so yeah I just like the way Oda did this chapter we got more lore about King and also Zoro's connection with the Shimazuki clan in this case it's Kozoboro so that's going to do for you guys thank you so much for watching like the review if you did it a thumbs up I appreciate that subscribe to for more One Piece catch you guys later thanks guys bye